Good morning. The object of this video today is to show um, you people exactly how you set up a Google group and the effectiveness of actually having a Google group um, with the facility of being able to email the entire group from your own mail client. Where you need to be is you need to be really in your Google Plus homepage like I am here and to find the Google groups they've hidden it really well which is under the more section up here and you go under even more and it opens up a new page and just here you want to click on the groups where it says look create mailing lists and discussion groups it's perfect for kind of online marketing because you can create a mailing list for free and you can also create a discussion group which you can actually use uh, as like a forum type thing which if you actually go over to here onto our, our busy bee com website you can see up here that we've put a tab in for forum actually that's an actual link straight to our own uh, busy bee colony colony group um, within Google groups so back to setting one up so if you click on the group option here and what it gives you a couple of options here it'll give you your own groups as you can see I'm a member of a couple of different groups and we want to create a new group so we're going to just give this one a um, a dummy name here, Busy B Test. So you need to give it a group email address, and this is very important because this is when you're in your email client and you want to send a message to every group member, this is the email address that you use. So as you can see here, look, group email address, Busy B Test at googlegroups.com. You would then write a description of what the group is about. Um, so if you're using it as a forum, you could put this as a forum to discuss any problems you might have with online marketing, social media, or product information depending on what your business is. If it's a mailing list that's being set up, then describe it. So just put uh, group information description in here. Groups primary language, this is really cool. It gives you a drop down menu here of different languages. We're English, we're United Kingdom, so that's what I'm going with. So then you need to select your group type. So it says here, group types are pre-configured settings for your Google group and make configuring your group a little easier. You can always set, sorry, you can always change the specific settings and enable additional features to match your needs. Select the type to get more information. So if you have it as an email list, which I think has got a lot of potential with Google, because if you can build this group to an awful large number of people, you've basically got a free email marketing list where you would pay to use, say, Aweber or MailChimp, you can actually kind of build the same kind of setup within Google for free. There's a couple of different options in there. So you could have an email list, a web forum. So that would be obviously your discussion settings. So here, a web forum allows people to interact with the group and have engaging and interactive discussions on the web. It has web optimized features enabled, including moderation tools. Group members post topics and replies through the web interface, but can still receive updates via email. Your Q&A forum. A question and answer forum is a web forum with extra features enabled to support the experience of asking and answering issues. Topics can be marked as resolved or be rated by users. In addition, you can use categories to organise questions within the forum. People must post through the web interface, but they can still receive the updates via email. A collaborative inbox. Topics can be assigned to other members and treated as tasks which can be resolved or reassigned. Additional options are available to control who can assign and receive tasks. Because I really believe in the power of this as an email marketing facility, I'm going to set it up as an email list type group. And then you go down here and you now go to your basic permissions. View topics, so select group of users, so it defaults to all members of the group. Well, you really kind of want all your members to be able to see what's being said. So I'd leave it as that. Posting. These users can post messages in the group. Realistically, I think if you're going to do it like this, you really want everybody to be able to post messages into this group. But there are other options there available. Public, managers of the group, owners of the group. So really dependent upon what you want to set this email list up like, or how, or you want to encourage other people to interact with each other, you just select which one applies to you there. I'm going to leave it as all members of the group for now because I kind of think that's quite a good way of introducing people and interacting with each other. Your basic permissions. So who can join? Anyone can ask to join. Only invited users or public. I think you should leave this so anyone can ask to join the group because at least then you're going to be able to vet the applications that come into the group. Once you've selected those options there to how you want them, you literally just hit create. 
Oh, it's asking me to put a spam capture in, so let's put that in. Let's hope that's right. Done. So now the group is created. So as you can see, look, congratulations, your Google group has been created. I can invite people to join the group. Oh. I can then customise the group settings. I can add a topic and start posting. Well, this is what I want to do. The benefit of doing this is I wanted to show you how to add a topic and start posting. So let's go for it. So this is a subject. Let's just put test. This is a test for to demonstrate how it works. Purely for this video. If you need to attach a file, you can do that. The other really great thing is if you want to see, see somebody in that's not a part of the Google group, it gives you an option in there. So let's just put my work email in here for now. I want to start a discussion. I want to make an announcement. You just select what it is you want to do there. If it's just a general announcement, which is kind of what you would want to do, I think if you was using it as an email marketing tool and you wanted to share information with people, if you wanted to ask a question or gauge some, do a little bit of market research with your group members, then you start a discussion. It gives you here that you can display at the top and if you want to lock the discussion out. I'm going to leave it all blank for now. There's all the, um, in here, look, you've got your um, font, You've got the size, you've got your bold, you can, hi you can hyperlink, you can add pictures, you can bullet point, you can align it. So you can do all those kind of things that you would normally do. So then you hit, hit post here. Your photo and name are currently hidden within this group. I can change this now, I can change it later. So if I have a Google profile, which I actually do, I'll link it to my Google profile, which will then show my photos on the um, posts. I'm happy for it to use my full name because at the end of the day I'd want to communicate with people and I want people to be able to find me. So if I just leave it all like that and just hit save my settings, I recommend that you really do do that yourself because to be honest you really want to be approachable. If you're, if you're building an email list and you want a relationship market with people you need to be completely transparent and let people be able to find you. So now if you go to my groups in here I've got my busy bee test don't need to worry about these other ones here because these are just other ones that I use regularly. So let's go back into the Busy Bee Test group. So now you can see that the message that I just posted has been put in there. Now I want to show you guys something. I'm going to go to my Gmail account and I'm now going to show you how to reply. As you can see here in my uh, primary inbox on Gmail, the email was now delivered to me. Now I can reply in here, can reply to all. The really, really great thing about this is that it delivers to your email client inbox. So depending on what email address you use when you request to join or someone sends you an invitation is where it will deliver. And if you want to compose an email back, busy oh, bee test at googlegroups.com new test. This is a new test. And I then send that. Your message has been sent. If I now go, now go back into my groups, what should happen is we should end up getting, eventually it will drop in, there will be a new um, thread within this group. It's taking a little... Ah, delivery status notification failure. Okay, I'm going to just run with this video while I'm here because, to be honest with you, I want to show you the downfall of using it and also the, the plus side of using it. As you can see here, look, schoolgirl error on my part, busy bee with two E's. Okay, so let's go back and we'll just uh, rectify that. Let me just reply to this one so that you can all see. Replied and received. And let's do a new test. Busy, remember to get it right, one E only. Test at Google groups.com. New test. <laughs> Getting my spelling right this time.
So if you do try and email a group and it is the wrong email address and you're doing it for your email client, you'll get your delivery failure notification like you would do for any other email that you send out. So here, let's send that again. And let's see what happens now in our Busy Bee group. Ah, now, okay, so, two posts. What I just replied and received from my email client is now within the group, which is fantastic. So every group member would be able to see that. And, oh, wrong one. And what have we got in here? I'm hoping now that this is a... But it's not. Right, for some reason it's taking a while to actually try and go into this new group. Ah, here we go, new test. There you go. So now you can see the email that I sent from my email client. And look, it's all hyperlinked with my signature that's in my email client. Has now gone into this Google Groups area. Okay, so that's pretty much where we're at with setting up a Google group. There is an awful lot that goes on in these places. I'm going to just open up to you my BNI Colchester Heritage Group because I want you to see exactly what using a group like this can do. For those that don't know about BNI, it's a uh, real-life networking uh, group across Europe and actually, actually it's across the globe. And I'm a member for my family business in my local area where I live. And as you can see here, there's various different conversations that are happening. And all of these people are responding and using this directly from their email client. Obviously we're talking about different kind of things that are going on within our group, but um, I'm hoping that you can kind of see the benefit of why we would use this. I'm just gonna show you now how to invite somebody to the group, my group. So we wanna manage this group, and then you go to here, all members. At the moment I'm the only member. If I wanted to invite a member, so let's just do this. I'm going to invite myself to the group. And if you wanted to introduce, invite somebody, sorry, that you've done business with or you speak to on a regular basis or someone that you really feel would benefit from being a member of your group, write them an invitation. Tell them why you want them there. If you're using this for an offline business where you want to communicate monthly offers, I don't know, for example, your restaurant or your stationery supplies business or your clothing business or your cupcake making business and these are previous clients of yours. Send them an invitation. You can send it to multiple people with commas but don't be frightened to say, look, joining this group here, you'll get these benefits. I'm not going to give you, an, I'm not going to over spam you. You'll get an opportunity to talk to other clients of mine, other friends of mine, other people relating to the business. Write them a personal invitation because believe me, this really can work. And the reason I'm so passionate about it is because I see it working in real life with my BNI group. And as soon as I realised that you could use this from your own email client and you didn't need to be inside Google to do it, I've replied to my groups from my smartphone, from my iPad, from my desktop PC, from a PC that I've used when I've been on holiday. I'm really seeing the power of it. If you've got an important message and you want to get it in front of a lot of people, then this is a perfect way to do it. You can get people in mass great Google communities in this area. And yes, yeah, someone may say to you, but I'm in your Google community. Why do I want to be in your Google group? Make them believe the Google group is a special area that is accessed for VIPs, the people you want to look after, the people you want to get to know. If they're inside this group, and you have the opportunity to communicate with them once a week through email like this, there's a, you're, going to you're going to find there's a very good chance these people could turn in from a non-paying customer to a paying customer. So write an e email invitation out. Make it personal. Make them feel important. It's, it's no different to using Aweber. It's no different to using Outlook. It's no different to using MailChimp. You want to build that relationship. You can do it here. And the best part is it's free. And I know a lot of people can be a little bit anti-Google sometimes, but this, I believe, really is one of the best features that Google are offering people. And they don't make a big deal out of it. They've hidden it quite well up here in the more section, in the even more section. I think more people need to learn about this. I feel quite passionate about it. You may be able to tell from this video that I'm making, but I can see so much potential for people, particularly if you really can't afford to pay for an email marketing service such as Aweber or MailChimp. 
So I'm going to write myself a little message. Hi Claire, just wanted to invite you to my new Google mailing group. The reason for joining this is I want to house all my important customers and friends alike so that I can share some really amazing information with you about my services and related industry information. I don't like spam. Therefore, the messages received in this group oh, will be that of value to you. And also an opportunity to oh, oh, opportunity to network and meet people just like you. So you can also learn from each other. I don't know really how, how you want to write it or what you want to write, but when I build a Google group and I communicate with people, I really, really, really want to focus on the fact that it's going to allow people to network. And when you network with people in real life or even online, you're opening up endless opportunities for business transactions to take place, friendships to happen, and JVs to happen. Now, Busy Bee was born out of being a part of a group on Facebook, and the five people that I do Busy Bee with, that I work with so closely, are literally my right arm. This won't work without all of us, and if we didn't have online networking, and we built those relationships up, then this would never have happened. And I think it's so important to stress that if you spend the time in scenarios such as these that you can set up for yourself, there are limitless possibilities for you to do better and you to deliver better and you to achieve more. And I think that's so important. There are so many tools out there that people think, I need this and I need that. And you're happily giving your credit card details over and you're buying things that you really don't need to buy. This is one of those areas that is free, it's always going to be free, and it's so easy to use. Anyhow, I really, really wanted to just do this video just to quickly show you how easy it is to do that. So let's send this information to myself. Ooh. Send the invitation. Done. Oh, no, another little capture. I don't really know why I'm doing this is happening all the time to me, but I'm finding it quite frustrating. But anyway, let's just go with it. Done. Invitations have sent. And then the people that you've sent those invitations to will get a request to join and they'll literally hit accept or decline. The minute they accept, they can communicate with every member in the group just by using the email address given that we set up, that you set up when you start the group. So it'll be busy b dash test at googlegroups.com for this particular group. Anyway, that's just my video done now. Um, I hope you found it of use. And if you do get any questions about setting up a Google group, then please, please, please don't hesitate to drop me an email. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on the Google community. Just drop a message to the Facebook page saying you need to speak to Claire about the uh, Google group setup and I will get back to you as quickly as I possibly can.